It's time for Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. Join us as we study the uncompromised Word of God and how it can be applied to our everyday lives. When I was getting ready for this week, God usually just starts stirring stuff and over in you, you know, and you just start thinking on a subject, and you know that's where God's taking you to teach. And man, if it didn't pop up everywhere all over social media, <laughs> God is in control. Well, our title today is Who is in Control? Who is in Control? You know, I kind of thought about the Titanic. I tried to find a good clip of it, but you remember in the movie, the Titanic, the ship's going down and, and they're playing cheerful music. And the, the captain is standing at the helm. Why? I don't know. Like he, you know, it, it's out of control. It's out of control. And I know sometimes there's a lot going in our nation right now that makes you feel out of control. There's a lot going on in our world right now that looks like it's out of control. That's because Christians haven't taken control. Amen. And that's why we are where we are. And so we've got to realize, and I think that the, the stance of most of Christianity is God is in control. Therefore, Bill, they never take control over anything in their life. They don't vote because God is in control. God can't vote. He votes through you. He, he votes through you. God, there's things that, that God cannot take care of in the earth because of his word. For instance, man's free will. He will not override it. He will not override it. And yet there's so many times we treat God like he can. And it's not right. So today we're going to talk about who's in control. It's a tough subject because it goes against the grain. A lot of people use it flippantly. Humans. I've been watching flugels a lot. Anybody feel my pain? Flugels? Sprout? Okay. Y'all know what I'm talking about when I, I almost say humans instead of humans because that's what they call them when they're... Humans don't know what to do, so they say God's in control. Because they, they quite frankly don't know what to do. So it's just easier to say God's in control. In this election, people are saying God's in control. No, he may could have been when he sent a prophet to anoint somebody as king. That's not the system we're under. We're voters. We're, so God's not going to rig the election. Boy, can I get just a little bit here? God told me back when it was time to nominate people to put my money where my mouth was. Because if he's going to raise up good people from our communities who will represent us in our government, most of them are not millionaires. That you want represent most of them are not. So God told me, you're the salt of the earth. You're the lot. You want somebody in office, put your money where your mouth is. Side note. God's in control because we don't know what to do. We don't want to do what God says to do, so we, so God, we say God's in control. We haven't done what we were supposed to do, so we say God's in control. Because that's just a flippant phrase we can put out there to put everything on God instead of putting the responsibility on the body of Christ and the church. That's not this kind of church. I, I think we have some of the most responsible people here that take action in their schools. That take action in their, their local and city and state and national government. Who take action when things, when, um, when things come up on the ballot. We have people that study and actually look to see what that issue is about. And you're supposed to. You're supposed to because God can't control that. You can. It's not going to all be about politics today, I promise. Why would we need faith in God? I mean, why would we need faith if God was in control? That's right. That's right. 
why would he say, hear more of the word, build your faith. Faith comes by hearing him. Why would, what would we even need faith for if God was in control? If God was in control of health or sickness, why would he put in the, in the, the scripture by Christ stripes, we are healed so that I could build my faith on that. We would just people want, who would be healed would be healed. Why would you go to the doctor if God was in control? It wouldn't do a bit of good. Why would you pray if God was in control? Why would you even pray? When we put it down where we live, it just, it just doesn't make sense, Jody. Balcony dwellers. It doesn't make sense. And yet we throw that cliche out so easily. We don't. I, but I see it a lot and I hear it a lot. God is in control. Genesis 126. We've got to know what is in God's hands and what he has placed in ours. We've got to know. We've got to know. We've got to know what our privileges are, what our rights are, and where we don't belong, <laughs> what, we don't, what business we don't belong in. Genesis 1, this is creation. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. God created the earth. He put man in it and he gave it to man. And he said, I want the levels to have dominion. I want the events to have dominion. He, he gave them the world. He gave it to man and he made them in his likeness and after his dominion so that they could control it the way he would. So that they could rule over it and be a ruler and, and have dominion like he does. And he made, he made Adam, I'm going to use you as Adam. He made you, Adam, like himself and gave you a world. He gave him a world. And this is brought out again in Psalm 115, verse 16. It says, the heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth has he given to the children of men. He gave you the world. And if there's chaos down here and things are out of control down here, it's because from Adam forward, people haven't taken control the way God created us to take control. And I know that's heavy. And I know we feel like one little fish in an ocean sometimes and like we're, we're battling the rest of the world. That's why he said, you be that light. You be that light in the middle of darkness, you'll be a city on a hill. And there may be darkness all around you, but he still needs that light. So we can't get overwhelmed with, we can't change this, we're just one person. We are one person. We are one person. And I've seen in scripture over and over and over again, where one person could change a nation. One person could change the outcome of a nation. So we can't fall into this, oh, God's in control, or there's nothing I can do, this is bigger than us. We can't fall into that lie because it is simply not true. He gave man the ability through authority to keep the earth under control, and he expected us to rule in this life. He expected Adam to rule in this life. Adam lost his ability because he didn't use his authority. Adam lost his ability because he did not use his authority. Adam lost it, which means a man lost it, and it would take a man to get it back. And that is why Jesus had to come into the earth as a man, because the earth was man's. God couldn't just zap things back to the way they were. He had given it. He's a man of it. He's not a man of his word. He is a being of his word. He's, he's limited by his word at his own doing. He says, I'm not a man that I should lie. So if he gave the earth to man, he gave the earth to man. And he's not going to go back and take it back just because Adam messed it up. 
So therefore, because a man lost that authority and, and man was the only one that, that could have this authority in the earth, he had to have a man come into the earth and that man was Jesus Christ. And he came into the earth to get back that authority that Adam had lost. Hmm. And then he handed it to you. He got it back and it didn't go to heaven with him. He handed it to you. Go with me to Luke. I'm just going to pull one phrase out of this lesson. I know there's lots here, but let's just look at, at Luke 19 and read two verses, 12 and 13. I want to pull out one phrase he says here. He's teaching them in a parable. And he said, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. He's obviously talking about himself. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. He didn't say, sit back, I'll take control when I come back. He said, occupy. I'm looking for Sergeant Scruggs and any walks. It's not Sergeant anymore, though. Correct me? The boss. <laughs> when you go into a territory and you occupy it, what does that mean? You keep order. You, you, you try to keep control. You try to keep the bad things from moving in. You try to establish something good. Jesus just said, I'm going to take care of getting the kingdom. When I come back, I'll come back. But until then, you occupy till I come. You keep out what needs to be kept out. You bring in what needs to be established and set up in order for there to be order and peace and control. You occupy till I come. That's us. We occupy until he comes. We're put here to be different makers. We're put here to be different and to make a difference. Matthew 5, we're going to whip through these pretty quick, but Matthew 5, 13, now the Amplified. You are the salt of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. You are the preservative of the earth. You are to set the flavor of the earth. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, its strength, its quality, how can its saltiness be restored? It is not good for anything any longer but to be thrown out and trodden underfoot by men. And that's just pretty much where a lot of the church world is gone. They just exist. In their own little world, they exist. But it's not about our own little four walls of the church. It is about the world. And he said we're to be the salt of the world. The earth, not just the church. Can you imagine how salty it would be if we just all stayed in here and just salt in here? It's out there that there needs to, that God's laws and God's ways need to be preserved. It's in your school that God's ways need to be preserved. It's on your job that mor morals and, and work ethic needs to be preserved. It's in your home that God's ways need to be preserved. It needs to be out of here and out there. And then he says, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Cannot be hidden. And a lot of Christians don't want attention drawn to themselves. Those days are over. You don't blend in anymore. Not if you're going to keep his ways. And not if you're going to serve him and not if you're going to do life the way God says to do life. Not if you're going to walk anointed and appointed by God to help people, to lay hands on the sick and to watch them. Not if you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Not if you're going to move the way God has called us to move in the last days and be a city on the hill. You're not going to blend in anymore. And sometimes that's not comfortable. It's like that's not comfortable for those spotlights to be hitting me in the eyes right now. Every Sunday morning I get up here and I can't see part of you. I can't look certain because those lights are shining on me. But it's necessary for me to be seen. Yeah. 
in order to minister this on to television. See, it's bigger than me. It's bigger than my comfort level. It's bigger than your comfort level. It's about being a lot and a city on a hill that can't be hidden. <laughs> this, and I started not to put this in my notes, but it came to me more than once, so I did it. You're not oxygen absorbers. You're not just here to take up space and air. God has a purpose for your life. He has a ministry. He has called you into the ministry of reconciliation. And he has called you to cause change in our world. And if that means one-on-one, -on -one, one person at a time, if it means singing before hundreds or singing before thousands, however you think, however big you can think. That wasn't just me talking. However big you can think. Prepare yourself for that. Keep yourself in such a light, such a way that when the spotlights hit you, you stand boldly. Nothing makes you back up or back off. Every day, live with that spotlight. You will be exalted in due time. You've been given authority, power, and dominion. And you have the right and the responsibility to walk in it. The right and the responsibility. With rights comes responsibility. I have a right to vote. I have a responsibility to vote. God sees us the same way. We can't afford Adam's mistake. And lose our ability because we don't walk in our authority. In the earth, we got to walk in our authority. In Luke 10, I love this account. Jesus has sent the 70 out. And they are so surprised and so shocked at what's happened while they're out there. He sent them out into the world to do his work. And they come back. Luke 10, 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Oh my goodness. <laughs> we just went out there and made a difference. Have you ever felt that way when you were actually obedient to God and you did something and results came from it? Yeah. And you're like so surprised? Why are we so surprised? We're the body of Christ out doing the work of Christ. And so the 70 come back and they're, they're, oh my goodness, you wouldn't believe what happened when we went out there. The devils, they are subject unto us through your name. You know why? Because he told them to go out there in his name and cast out devils. And then they're shocked that when they're obedient and they do it, they got the results that God sent them out to do. And Jesus said to them, yeah, I watched Satan as he fell from heaven. I watched his rear end get kicked right out. <laughs> He's like, guys, come on. I was there when God threw him out. I was there when he tried to overcome the throne of God. And God spoke to him and watched him fall like lightning to the earth. Yes. Behold. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Who's in control? In the earth, who has this authority? I see the word you. I see the words, I give it to you. He's preparing them because he's leaving. He's not going to be here to do the Father's works in the earth. He knows God can't control these things from heaven. Legally, he cannot. He has the power, but he won't break his word. And what man has brought into the earth, man has to control. And this is so important to know because we have so many people trying to use their faith to change people. 
to get God to change somebody. God won't cross his word. He gave man free will. We help people change. And then God puts all his power behind it. But if we don't take that step, God can't take that step. Matthew 16, verse 19, out of the Amplified. And I give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind and declare to be improper and unlawful on earth must be what is already bound in heaven. And whatever you loose and declare lawful on earth must be what is already loosed in heaven. Remember what Jesus said? To let it be on earth as it was in heaven. That's what we're still enforcing down here. And he said, he just gave us the keys and you've got my keys. He said, he gave us the keys to the kingdom. Carly, I give you the keys to the kingdom of RCC. There is a lot of keys on there because there's a lot of doors around here. I give her the keys to the kingdom. She can't create doors with that. But she can lock and unlock the doors that are. And she can control what comes in and she can control what goes out because I gave her the keys to the kingdom. If you'll make sure Mr. Rusty gets those after service, I'll be thankful. <laughs> he said, I give to you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And I, I love dad's always said, God didn't give us faith to create universes. He didn't, he didn't give you that power. He didn't give you that door. That door's not here, so you don't have a key to it. But the things that he did give us, the doors that are already here, we have a right to lock and unlock. What's already loosed in heaven, we have a right to loose here. Is, is health loosed in heaven? Is joy loosed in heaven? Is peace loosed in heaven? Then I have a right to loose it here. I have a right to bring it here. What's, what's not allowed in heaven? Confusion, strife, sickness and disease, sin. Those things will not have dominion over us because we have the keys to the kingdom to lock out those things from our life. Who's in control? You who have the keys. You got the keys. We got to walk in that authority. They don't, staff doesn't call me or dad and say, we need to let somebody in the building. You know what I would say? You've got a key. Well, we're down here at the church, but the, the pew guys need in. Okay. Okie dokie. Lee, have you checked your pockets? You've got the keys. He has the keys. He has to remember to use his ability that's been handed to him with God's authority behind it to unlock and to lock and to release and to declare lawful and to declare improper and unlawful. Now I'm going to go on a side journey here just because I got permission from God to do so. I don't care who, you, who you're voting for. I'm not telling you who to vote. I realize it's tough out there. Okay? But never make bad try to look good. I don't care who you're for. You're a light. You are salt. There is no gray in us. If wrong is wrong, it's wrong. If right is right, it's right. And it doesn't matter who the person is. We can't get caught up in trying to justify our own political agendas and mixing, trying to mix God in that. What is unlawful and what is evil is unlawful and evil. No matter if it's me, you, or who. That's free. With power and authority and control comes great responsibility. With power, authority, and control comes great responsibility. And the weight of not abusing it. I remember one time... Dad was going out of town, and there was some stocks he was watching. And he gave me control of the kingdom <laughs> to day trade. 
this stock. And so with that authority and ability and control came the weight of the responsibility. Now I can click the mouse all day long trading stocks for myself, but when I go to taking care of things for God or dad, the father, we'll just say the father, you can apply it where it will, the father, then this awesome weight of responsibility comes on you. And so to, to, to step out and do something in God's name can be very, very heavy, and it should be. But yet at the same time, how can he increase if I'm afraid to hit the button? I think I made you 40000 that day, if I remember correctly. <laughs> give, give me the keys, Daddy. Give me the keys. But if you're scared, you won't step out and increase for God. You've got to realize he needs mankind. Mankind needs God for the power. And God needs Brett Creek more for the authority. Because you have authority in the earth. You can do things in the earth that God can't do without you. Remember what dad has always said? Man's authority releases God's ability. God's got the ability, but he needs a man to give him an opening in the earth. Always has. He needed Abraham to give Isaac so that he could give Jesus. He needed Rahab. He needed, he needed Moses. He needed Joshua. He needed mankind to do things for him. He still does. And yes, he is all powerful. He is powerful. He has the ability, but he needs an opening into the earth. And we're that opening into the earth. We need him and he needs us. It's a beautiful, beautiful relationship that we have. Just remember, those who would abuse it can't use it. There are safeguards on the kingdom of God. And those who would abuse it can't use it. Faith doesn't work for those who are using it wrong. It, it just, that's almost an oxymoron. You, you just, those, that doesn't go together. So don't be afraid to step out. If, if you're reading the word and it's telling you what to do and God's asking you to do it, your heart's right. If you, you can't abuse it, if your heart's right, step out and do what God's called you to do. Adam and Eve were not given dominion over mankind. I want to make sure we get this covered. Adam and Eve were not given dominion over people. They were given dominion over the earth. Jesus did not have power over mankind. I know that makes you suck the oxygen out of the air. If he had had power over mankind, the Pharisees would not have remained Pharisees. He had to deal with people just like we've got to deal with people. And, he, and because Jesus didn't have authority over mankind, Adam and Eve didn't have authority over mankind, I don't have authority over mankind. I have authority over me, my family. I can speak over me and my family. I have that authority. But I don't have authority over Cherie. I can't control Cherie. And let me tell you why I'm glad. Because if I controlled Cherie, and I wanted her one way, and Mandy back there, Miranda, wanted Cherie another way, and Tina wanted Cherie another way, what a mess we would be. So he just didn't give us that door. He, di he didn't give us that door. So we don't have keys to that door. That's something God gave mankind free will. It's God's will that no man should perish. It's God's will that no man can. This ought to tell you that God cannot force man. It's not. He, the scripture plainly tells us it's not. It's not his will for man to perish, but it's his will that everyone should be saved. Is everybody going to be saved? No. 
That tells me he can't force that. He offers that and mankind must accept it. It's provided, but mankind must accept it. So please remember when we're talking about who's in control and we're talking about we're in control down here on the earth and we're supposed to keep things under control. That doesn't mean you control me and I control you. I, I hear people all the time praying for people, you know, yes, pray for people. But how we pray for people, and we'll probably talk about prayer next week, is different with this mentality. Because God can't just make somebody do something. If he could, God knows the world would be a different place than the way it is. We're supposed to influence. Here's a good rule of thumb. If Jesus couldn't, you can't. If Jesus did, you can. And if Jesus did, you should. He told us, you can do the works that I'm doing and greater works than these can you do. So if Jesus couldn't, I can't. If he didn't control people with authority and power, then I can't either. If he healed the sick and he had the authority to do that, and please, a friend of mine, I talked about this the other day. You can't just go and stick healing on somebody. Just because you believe in it and just because it's a good thing and we know it's God's will doesn't mean we can go stick healing on somebody. This is why you would hear Jesus or hear the, the disciples say, will you be made whole? Or they would look for some sign like obviously if they brought them up to be healed, it was their will to be healed. But he didn't just go out and start healing people that didn't call for him or come to him. Why? Because they have a will. And God respects mankind's will. He will not cross it. So that's, that's good to remember when we're praying for people. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. So if Jesus could do it, you can do it. If Jesus did it, you should do it. Amen? You can see the, the power in the authority of Jesus when he walked on the earth. He talked to trees, and I put the reference in your notes. You don't have to turn there. We'll save some time by not turning there. He looked at that tree, and he said, No man eat fruit of you hereafter forever. He did not pray to God and say, Father, I ask you to kill this tree. And that's what people all over the Christian world are doing. They're asking God to do something that's in their realm of authority. If it's in the earth, that tree was of the earth. It, was, it had lying signs, lying symptoms. And so he spoke to the tree. He didn't say, God, Father, kill this tree. He said, no man's ever going to eat fruit off you again. And they went by the next day and that thing was dead. It was dying from the root. It was responding to the authority of that Jesus walked in as a man. Remember, he came into the earth as a man, emptying himself of his deity powers and functioning just as Adam did in Genesis, yet without sin, so that he showed us how we can live without sin and the authority that we could have as mankind, humans, as the flugels would say. Mark 4, a great storm arises. Verse 37, Jesus is asleep. They wake him up. They're freaking out. They think they're going to die. Jesus didn't stand up and say, Father, save us. Father, spare us. Father, send away the storm. He stood up. He spoke to that wind and he said, peace be still. So when a tornado was coming to your county... What are you going to do? You speak. Why? Because that's of the earth. You have authority. Who's in control? I can't believe that tornado hit us. We were praying. Yeah, you're praying out of fear and we're praying wrong. What do we, who is in control? That's an earth thing. If it's an earth thing, it's a me thing. Jesus, when he would pray to the Father, it was about spirit things. 
Father, if it's your will, let this cup pass from me. That wasn't an earth thing. That was a spirit thing. So we've got to remember to separate the two. Remember what falls into God's hands and what falls into ours. If I'm needing the wisdom of God, I ask God for the wisdom of God. Because that's his. That's not an earth thing. So I ask him for wisdom. And it says if I ask him for wisdom, he won't withhold it from me. But he'll give it to me liberally. He spoke to devils. And I thought about this. Mark chapter 1. He cast out devils. And he suffered not the devils to speak because they knew who he was. He told them to shut up. And I thought, well, that's a spirit thing. I'm trying to separate spirit things from earth things. And God said, yeah. But that devil was on man's earth. And just as Adam should have told the serpent, the enemy, Satan, to get out of his earth, out of his garden, the devils don't have a right to be in mine. We have authority here, and we should use it. The scripture calls Jesus the last Adam. And he showed us how the earth was to be ruled. Where Adam missed it, Jesus did not. And we are to rule it the same way. We've been given power and authority that Jesus regained. And it's not wrong to walk in it. It's wrong not to walk in it. It's not pride to walk in it. It's pride not to walk in it. Anytime we put ourselves above the word, you can call it humility if you want to. It's not. It's pride. We're to walk in what he's given us. Matthew 28, verse 18, Jesus came and spoke to them. And he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And I will be with you always, even to the end of the age. All power's been given unto me, Jesus said. All power's been given unto me. All power's been given unto me. Go you therefore. Not, oh, God's going to do all this because go you, therefore, and do what God wants done. You're his agent in the earth. We're called ambassadors. He's not here. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father God. If he's going to get something done in our country, if he's going to get something done in your school, on your job, it's going to be through somebody. You say, well, God speaks. Yes, but he speaks through people. Even this was spoken through man. Is God in control? That's really too vague of a question to answer simply with a yes or a no. Acts 1 tells us some things that are left in God's control, total control. He did not give us a key to this door. He didn't give us this door to unlock or to to open or to close. This is his. And he said, it's not for you to know the times or the season which the Father has put in his own power. And you know what? Even those things of when he's coming back, he has not told Jesus. Because the scripture tells us if he told Jesus, the Holy Spirit would have to reveal it to us. If one man knows, we all have a right to know. And he is still a man seated at the right hand of the Father God. So there's some things that God has in his own control. We can't influence them. We can't know those things. There are things that only God can do. I cannot create a universe. God can. I can't make time stop. God can. Those things are under his control. They're not under my control. But what's in my control, I need to know is in my control so I can use my authority to activate his power to bring about a change in the earth. And I can't afford to sit back and say, God is in control when cancer's in somebody's body. He has provided a way for healing. But he said... The believer shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover involves the believer. 
When he said you could increase your faith, as dad taught last week, by hearing the word, you have the ability to increase your faith. That's for a reason. That's because you have, you have a responsibility to activate his word in your life. If he could just stick it on us, Mary, he would. But it's not how he set it up. He didn't want us to be created beings like the angels who have no right of choice. They have the ability of choice, but they don't have a right of choice. That's why Lucifer could cross the line he crossed. He had the ability to choose, but he didn't have a right to choose. And he chose wrong. God didn't want us like the angels. He wanted us to freely choose. And when he gave us that right, he also gave us the awesome responsibility to take charge and to release his ability in the earth and in our own lives. Amen. Y'all can stand. The reason this message is so important is so that you won't be passive. Jesus was far from passive. And I see a lot of Christians being passive, not taking their responsibility and not taking their action in any area of life because they use the phrase, and I just heard it last week, God is in control. Yes, he is. And he handed you some responsibility. And he handed you some rights and privileges. And I think that's going to be the beauty of the body of Christ growing up into our responsibility and into our privileges that's really going to set the church world apart from the earth. Not just sitting back and taking what life throws at you, but being overcomers that the scripture tells you you are. Man, when we had those cancer overcomers walk up here last week. That's a city on a hill. That's a city on a hill that's different than what the world is seeing. Terminal is not a word for us. Stage four is a number. That's all it is. That's all it is. Because we know we don't have to just take what the world throws at us and what the enemy throws at us, but we have a right and we have a responsibility. And we have a privilege to control what God has given us control of. If you've got the key to it, use it. Amen. This has been Living Faith from the Russellville Christian Center. If you would like more teaching, you can visit our website at www.rccenter.org or download our app to your device. The Russellville Christian Center is located at 305 Lakefront Drive. If you would like to purchase a copy of this program or if you would like more information, please call 479-968-7965.